Welcome to this lecture series on Environment and Ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Namak APSC. So in this video, we'll be completing our discussion about nitrogen cycle and therefore complete the entire discussion about nutrient cycling or biogeochemical cycling which was another important function of an ecosystem. Okay, so nitrogen is actually one of the primary nutrients critical for the survival of all living organisms. So nitrogen is a necessary component of many biomolecules including proteins, DNA and chlorophyll. Now I'm pretty sure everybody knows that nitrogen gas is, uh, is the most abundant gas which is found in the atmosphere. But even though nitrogen is very abundant in the atmosphere as dinitrogen gas, it is largely inaccessible in this form to most organisms as we don't have the right enzymes to capture or fix atmospheric nitrogen. Also, the strong triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms in dinitrogen gas or nitrogen molecules makes it relatively inert or unreactive whereas organisms need reactive nitrogen to be able to incorporate it into cells. So, even though nitrogen is abundant in the atmosphere, it is actually a scarce resource for biological use and hence a limiting factor for primary productivity in many ecosystems actually. So for nitrogen to become available to primary producers, dinitrogen gas will have to be converted into ammonia that is NH3. So here in this particular uh, slide over here, I want you to make note of the last point where the last point says that nitrogen fixation on earth is accomplished in three different ways. So we have nitrogen fixation by microorganisms, by man using industrial processes and also by atmospheric phenomena such as thunder and lightning. So we will discuss more about this as we go on ahead with our discussion in nitrogen cycle but you can just make a note of this particular point. Okay, so in addition to dinitrogen, nitrogen exists in many forms, both inorganic forms like ammonia, ni ammonia, nitrate and organic forms like amino acids, nucleic acids, etc. The transformation of nitrogen into its many oxidation states is actually key to productivity in the biosphere and this depends upon the activities of microorganisms. So here you should be able to see different steps. So these are the various steps which are actually included when it comes to the major transformations of nitrogen. That is nitrogen fixation, nitrogen uptake, nitrogen mineralization, nitrification and denitrification. So what we will be doing here is that since these are the different or various steps in nitrogen cycle, we will be going through each and every step one by one. So the first step is nitrogen fixation. Now, uh, I'm, I want you to relate this discussion with respect to the diagram which is actually shown in this video. So I will discuss, I will explain what is nitrogen fixation. I want you to relate the same with respect to the diagram. So the first step is nitrogen fixation. See, uh, we have already discussed that even though nitrogen gas makes up around 80% of the earth's atmosphere, still nitrogen is often the nutrient that limits primary production in many ecosystems because plants and animals are not able to use nitrogen in its gaseous form. So this is important. Please remember nitrogen. It also acts as a limiting factor. Now, coming back, for nitrogen to be available to make proteins, DNA and other biological compounds, this nitrogen, it must be first converted to a different chemical form. The process of converting nitrogen gas into biologically available nitrogen, that is ammonium, 
is called nitrogen fixation i'll just repeat it the process of converting nitrogen gas into biologically available nitrogen that is ammonium or ammonia is called nitrogen fixation so since nitrogen gas is very stable it actually requires a lot of energy to break the triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms and hence the process of nitrogen fixation can be carried out only by a few prokaryotes that is unicellular organisms certain bacteria especially rhizobium which form a symbiotic relationship with leguminous plants and inhibit sorry inhabit root nodules are able to fix nitrogen that is convert it to ammonium through a metabolic process some nitrogen fixing bacteria can even live without host plants such as cyanobacteria which are free living nitrogen fixers so these nitrogen fixing bacteria may be aerobic anaerobic phototropic or even chemotropic and are able to fix nitrogen because they have an enzyme known as nitrogenase i'll just repeat this the nitrogen fixing bacteria are able to fix nitrogen because they have a special enzyme known as nitrogenase which all other organisms do not have which helps them to catalyze the reduction of nitrogen to ammonia so here at each and every step there are certain reactions which are actually involved but for our prepare preparation these reactions are not required i only want you to remember and understand the different steps i am just going through the entire thing so that you have a broader understanding but at this stage it is enough if you remember that nitrogen fixation is a step or a process where nitrogen gas is biologically made available in ammonia which can be used by other organisms by certain bacteria known as nitrogen fixing bacteria so if this is clear we can obviously move on to the other step but before that i also want you to remember apart from these bacteria as i have uh, uh, as i had already requested you to make a note some high energy events like lightning forest fires volcanic eruptions burning of fossil fuels etc these natural events and certain man made processes can also fix nitrogen second step is nitrogen uptake so fairly simple so we have already discussed how nitrogen is fixed so in the second step that is nitrogen uptake the ammonium produced by nitrogen fixing bacteria is usually quickly taken up by a host plant the bacteria itself or other soil organisms and incorporated into the proteins and other molecules like dna so when organisms higher up in the food chain consume food that is feed upon the primary producers this nitrogen also gets into their system so this is a fairly simple step the nitrogen which, which has been uh, fixed in the first step that is nitrogen fixation is now used by the plants and when other animals feed on the plants and other uh, animals at the higher trophic level feed on these animals nitrogen gets introduced into the food chain and moves up through higher trophic levels this is known as nitrogen uptake nothing nothing but the introduction of nitrogen into the food chain next step is nitrogen mineralization also known as ammonification so since you have already understood what is ammonia uptake now what happens is when an organism excretes waste or dies decomposers like bacteria and fungi will decompose the tissue and release inorganic nitrogen back into the ecosystem as ammonia itself now first uh, in uh, in the first step ammonia was produced ammonia was made available in the second step ammonia was incorporated into the food chain in the third step that is nitrogen mineralization or ammonification ammonia is returning back into the ecosystem so this is known as ammonification the return of ammonia back into the ecosystem from the food chain or the food web is known as ammonification once in the form of ammonium the nitrogen is made available for use by plants or further transformation into nitrate through nitrification and this entire process is known as nitrogen mineralization so now two things can happen 
once the ammonia is, is, is returned back to the ecosystem, the same ammonia can be once again introduced into the food chain or it goes through the next step known as nitrification and this entire process is known as nitrogen mineralization. Now ammonification is nothing but the process where ammonia is reintroduced back into the ecosystem whereas after that it may be taken up by the plants or it may go to the next step that is nitrification. Okay, so here when it comes to nitrification some of the ammonium produced by decomposition is converted to nitrate via nitrification. So what will happen here is that when it comes to nitrification ammonia is first converted to nitrite and then to nitrate and hence it is known as nitrification. Now nitrification actually requires the presence of oxygen so nitrification can happen only in oxygen rich environments. Please remember this is an aerobic process. I will repeat it, it's an aerobic process. Nitrification can happen only in oxygen rich environments and the bacteria which carry out this reaction gain energy from it. Such bacteria are known as nitrosophires. Such bacteria are known as nitrosophires. Of course, there are some bacteria which are able to do this anaerobic, but for a general explanation, please remember it is always a it is always an aerobic process and these bacteria are known as nitrosophires. Now the energy produced in nitrification that is used by the bacteria is actually very small. The amount of energy which is produced is produced in very small amounts and therefore the bacteria depending on this energy that is the bacteria which take up this process of nitrification their growth is very very small meaning the metabolic rate is actually very very slow. Finally, we move on to denitrification. So denitrification is a process where nitrate is converted to nitrogen gas. So nitrification we had discussed, ammonia is converted to nitrate and here in the last step that is the fifth step denitrification, it is a process which converts nitrate to nitrogen gas thus removing the bioavailable nitrogen and returning it to the atmosphere and therefore completing the entire nitrogen cycle. Denitrification is nothing but the process which converts nitrate which was produced in nitrification to nitrogen gas thus removing the bioavailable nitrogen because nitrogen gas, gas cannot be directly used and therefore it returns, back into, uh, returns nitrogen gas back into the atmosphere. Now here Unlike nitrification, denitrification is an anaerobic process occurring in soil. Please remember, nitrification is aerobic, denitrification is an aerobic process occurring in soils and sediments carried out by nitrifying bacteria such as Bacillus or Pseudomonas. Once nitrogen gas is released, the cycle is completed, but this will also result in depletion of soil fertility because obviously I have told you that nitrogen is a limiting factor. So this completes our nitrogen cycle. So since we have completed our nitrogen cycle, uh, I would just like to discuss the ecological implications of human alterations to the nitrogen cycle. Now I did mention that nitrogen is a limiting factor. So if the amount of nitrogen in the soil is depleted, plant productivity also goes down. So we try to artificially increase this quantity in soil for agricultural purposes. So there is an artificial process through which humans are manufacturing nitrogen and adding more nitrogen into the ecosystem and this can have certain effects. So many human activities actually have uh, a significant impact on the nitrogen cycle, burning of fossil fuels, application of nitrogen based fertilizers and other activities can dramatically increase the amount of biologically available nitrogen in an ecosystem. Also since nitrogen availability often limits the primary productivity of many ecosystems, large changes in the availability of nitrogen can lead to severe alterations of the nitrogen cycle in both aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Now I am pretty sure you would have heard of something known as the Haber-Bosch process. The process that is the process of making synthetic fertilizers for use in agriculture 
by causing nitrogen to react to hydrogen. This is known as the Haber-Bosch process which has increased significantly over the past several decades that is the production of synthetic fertilizers having nitrogen. So this you can just make a note of it, it's known as the Haber-Bosch process. Okay, so coming to terrestrial ecosystems, the addition of nitrogen can lead to nutrient imbalance in trees, changes in forest health and decline in biodiversity. With increased nitrogen availability, there is often a change in carbon storage, thus impacting more processes than just the nitrogen cycle. When it comes to agricultural systems, fertilizers are used extensively to increase plant production. The unused nitrogen, usually in the form of nitrate, can leach out of soil, enter streams and rivers and make its way into drinking water. When it comes to marine ecosystems, this nitrogen, excess nitrogen which is washed away by rainwater can lead to anoxia that is no oxygen or hypoxia that is low oxygen conditions altering biodiversity of marine ecosystems and if this nitrogen makes its way to fresh water it can also lead to eutrophication and increased acidification in aquatic systems. I want you to remember this. So human in, uh, uh, manufacturing processes which are adding more and more nitrogen into the ecosystem and the environment is causing certain effects, certain unwanted effects. You can have more and more nitrogen gas in the atmosphere. You can have the formation of nitric acid. This nitric acid dissolved in uh, water, sorry, nitrogen dioxide dissolved in water will come down as acid rain. That will once again cause harmful effects. That will once again have harmful effects. It can also lead to greenhouse effect as in, uh, in the form of nitrous oxide. So when you have high levels of nitrogen in the atmosphere. So you can have several other spillover effects as well. And therefore it is very important that we take care and we uh, make use of this nitrogen judiciously so as to ensure that not much of nitrogen is introduced into the ecosystem. So uh, this completes our nitrogen cycle as well as the uh, important function of an ecosystem known as nutrient cycling. If you do have any, uh, uh, if you do have any doubts, please do write in the comment section and thank you.